The purpose of today's in-class group work was to describe how to solve problems involving three sets. Now, the first of these three problems was a more theoretical one, which sort of the goal was to kind of get you to think a little bit about how to represent various intersections of sets in a set theoretic notation and think about how to kind of break up the union into smaller chunks, because probability is really at the core about partitioning problems into smaller chunks a lot of the time. So, so let me clarify what this first question was asking and how you can go about solving it. So here I have drawn a Venn diagram of the union of three sets, A, B, and C. And in set theoretic notation, we can denote this by A union B union C. And to break that up into disjoint sets, what we want to do is think of this Venn diagram as consisting of seven regions. Right? Each of these seven regions involves actually the intersection of three different events. For example, region seven here. This would be all the items which are in C, but are not in A and not in B. And recall in class, we were using this tilde notation to represent the complement of an event or all the items which are not in that event. So going with this set theoretic notation, one way in which I could compute the probability of the union of three events is by adding together these seven disjoint contributions to that union. So for example, one, let's focus on that. Region one here consists of all the outcomes which are in A and not in B and not in C. Region two, right here, right, is all the events which are in A and in B, but not in C. Right? Now I'm not gonna finish writing all the rest I will leave that to your imagination, but just wanted to sort of clarify what was meant by involving only disjoint sets in that first condition here. Now, the second way of writing a formula for the union, which is more like the addition rule we had for a union of two sets, is to think about not breaking this up in terms of disjoint sets, but think of this in terms of first adding up the area of the individual circles or adding up the probability of the events A, B, and C, and then figuring out what you would need to subtract from this quantity in order not to overcount certain segments. For example, when I add together A, B, and C, I am double counting all these intersections of events. So I can compensate for that by subtracting all the intersections of two sets However, if I intersect out all the intersections of two sets, now I have completely gotten rid of this middle component, the intersection of all three. So we would have to add that back if we want a valid formula. So I'm not going to go over the solution to the second problem because it's fairly similar to the problem from pre-lecture. And uh, the answer is 37 people who who watch none of the channels in case you want to check your work. But I'd like to move on to the third one, which I think is a little bit more interesting. Now, when you're reading through a problem like this, there's three groups, right? There's the auto, auto owners, the home owners, and the renters. And one key bit of information here is that the homeowners and renters are mutually exclusive events. So what does mutually exclusive means? It means that if this is a Venn diagram of homeowners and renters, that there is no overlap between these two circles. So mutually exclusive, another synonym for that would be disjoint. There's no overlap between the two events. Now there is overlap with autos, so these circles are in no way drawn to scale, but auto insurance owners would kind of overlap with both homeowners and renters in this Venn diagram. All right, so once we've established the right picture, let's go on to look at the conditions we're given. I think for a problem like this, a way I like to approach it at least is to label each of the f disjoint components. So in this case, there are only five, A, B, C, D, and E, right? And proceed through this problem by sort of 
rephrasing each of the conditions in terms of these five unknowns and seeing which one, you know, hopefully honing in on the ones that I am interested in. In this case, what we're interested in is calculating the percentage of clients that have both auto and renters. So really our goal, our end goal is to get this one right here. So our goal is to find D. Right? So let's go through our conditions. The first condition we're given here is that 17% have none of the three products. So what that means is that if I drew my whole universe of, of, uh, of clients, then the outer universe would contain 17% of everyone, which means the inner universe would contain uh, 1 minus 0.17 or 83% of everyone. And so from the letters I've defined here, that would be the sum of all five unknowns, B, C, D. Okay. Now the second condition here focuses is on auto only. And in my Venn diagram, auto makes up B, C, and D. Okay. The third condition says that the homeowner's circle should actually be twice as large as the renter's circle. Now homeowners over here combine A and B, right? whereas renters combine D and E, and my condition is that A plus B should be twice D plus E. And finally, 35%, well not finally, second to finally, 35% of the clients have two of these products. So what does that mean? Well, there's two possibilities. Either they have auto and renters, or they have auto and home. So this condition tells me that B plus D should be 0.35. And now finally, we're at our last condition, which is that 11% of clients have homeowners, so here, but not auto. So we don't want to look at the intersection, we want to look at this outer part here, right? So that tells me actually that A is 0.11. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go through the solution, you'll have to wait for class to find the exciting conclusion. But once you have the system of equations, you know what A is, and you can kind of use that in conjunction with these others to nail down the other five. Notice that we do have one, two, three, four, five equations for the five unknowns. So that's a good situation to be in. Usually, as long as there are not inconsistencies, which since it's an exam P problem, there shouldn't be, you will be able to solve five equations for five unknowns.